Welcome to The Reason We Learn and this quick clip from my recent interview with Dr. Stephen Hicks, professor of philosophy at Rockford University in Illinois. We sat down to discuss the current crisis in American education, CRT, and a variety of other topics related to whether or not your children are getting the education they deserve and you want them to have. Catch the entire episode on my YouTube channel, or better yet, join my Locals community at thereasonwelearn.locals.com. We're coming into the, the end of our talk, and I just wanted to get your sense of, you know, how concerned are you overall? It, it sounded earlier like you were fairly optimistic in the sense that, you know, Americans are still a very independent bunch, very individualistic bunch um, culturally. Yeah. But I I wish I shared your optimism. So can you, can, can you tell me, like, I mean, how concerned should we be? Let's yeah. say as parents <laughs> about our children um, yes. with this education crisis being what it is with things like CRT now being embraced by the teachers unions that first they denied it. And then they said, you don't understand it. Now they say it's fantastic. And if you oppose it, you're a terrible person. And they want it yes. in every school district. Right. So one reason to be optimistic is that obviously those arguments that you just threw out, they're not very good arguments and they can be defeated. So, and uh, the other encouraging thing is that uh, suddenly in the last few years, we do have large numbers of parents who are paying attention and who are pushing back. And these are smart people. Uh, they might not be professionals in education and so on, but they have a brain, they know how to use it. They are savvy. They can, excuse my language, they can smell bullshit when they, when they smell it. And then CRT fundamentally is in the, in the BS category. And they're doing something about it. So I think all of that is very healthy, very good. And uh, you know, I do think when the argument is challenged, the people who have the better arguments and who are better informed and who are genuinely more committed to the education of children, they will prevail. That's not to say that it won't be ugly and it will be ugly for the next few, the next few years. What I am uh, more worried about is uh, my own profession because all of the arguments that are used by CRT people and all of the other pathological intellectual movements out there that are uh, infecting education right now uh, and that are very current in the schools of education. They were developed by philosophers. And then they, uh, you know, so the philosophers are kind of the, the laboratory scientists in this respect. So they develop these arguments. They get picked up by the history professors and and, and the literature professors, and then they get repackaged in the education schools, and then they go retail in the uh, in the public schools. So uh, while it is in part a political battle at the local level, state level, and federal level, it is a cultural battle as well. Mm -hmm. It will be battles in the education schools, but I think, uh, you know, not to pat or to elevate philosophers too highly, but uh, education is a philosophical enterprise. Uh, and so it's going to be those who have the best philosophical uh, arguments that will prevail. So, I hope so. I certainly, I certainly hope so. Now, the, and, other, the other part of the optimism, though, let me just say, I do think is is technological. So, you know, I am you know, very encouraged. You know that we are we are rich, so we've got a huge amount of money floating around for experiments in education. We can build all sorts of alternative programs and 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 see which ones work right and 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 don't. Uh, but then also the students themselves, you know, they uh, they might be getting garbage education six or seven hours a day in the formal schools, but <clears throat> music lessons outside of school, martial arts lessons, sports lessons, and all of those things are great, uh, uh, you know, teachers, right? And then what goes on inside the home and what uh, programs the students watch and what they explore on the internet. Uh, and, and, and really, you know, education fundamentally, when you get right down to it, is self-education. True. And so the students themselves, you know, they're young, they've got all that energy, they do have curiosity if they have a, a, you know, a functional uh, home environment to come. Uh, we can help them. Uh, it's not the case that only what happens in the schools uh, is as important. So we can fight the school battles, but also we've got a great culture otherwise in which uh, students can be opportunistic. Right. Now, what are your, in, in closing, can you tell me what are your favorite 
books other than the ones you've written um, about <laughs> <laughs> about education. Like, if I, if, what would you recommend that I or any of the people watching should go read to just yeah. better inform themselves? Even if it's not specifically about education, it could be about something else that might help parents just feel more solid in their own philosophy of education or why do we need this? What is the point? Yeah. Well, uh, we mentioned Montessori earlier mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I, I would say I'm kind of 95% on board with traditional Montessori. Okay. Uh, I would say uh, get, read Dr. Montessori's own handbook. It's a, it's a very nice, short introduction to uh, Montessori education. Mm -hmm. And she's just a wonderful human being. Uh, and that comes through. And even if you don't agree with her, her prose is so clear and her our, our ability to say, this is what education is about. And to put it right there, that will make you think about all of the right issues. And I think you probably will end up agreeing with with substantial amounts of Montessori. Now, education is an ongoing scientific experimental project. So we'll be updating Montessori with new information as it goes, uh, as it goes along. So that's the first name that comes to mind. Okay. And then on the basis of that, since she is a, an educational practitioner who actually built schools, which is also very philosophical and scientific uh, 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 from, from her times, she will help elevate all of us to the right way to think about the science and the philosophy as it bears on education. Well, I know that I get questions all the time from parents who have to use the formal schools, the public schools, and they say, they're teaching my children what to think, not how to think. What recommendations can you make that, to help them possibly at home learn those missing critical thinking skills, active thinking skills they're not necessarily getting? I know you you have some information about Socratic method, for example. Yeah. What, could, what could a parent do? Is there something they could read or encourage their child to read or yeah, well, I think uh, yeah, dinner time conversations are are great about this, uh, particularly if uh, there are siblings, because as we know, sibling rivalry is a is a is a phenomenon, and uh, um, it, it, in some ways that can be dysfunctional, but can also be you know fun. All of the teasing, and someone says this, but then someone contradicts them and says, "What about that?" So I think a huge amount of uh, learning how to defend yourself from criticism and defend a, your position better. Uh, comes around the family dinner table, and then parents are uh, hopefully uh, you know managing and having a benevolent context, and then filling in larger context and so on. So, eating meals with your family on a regular basis, I think, yeah. is a wonderful educational thing. There's actually uh, statistics think, to back that up. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I was just armchair philosophizing on. on yeah. That. Yeah. I'd also say uh, watch television with your kids. Watch their program. Watch all of the kids shows. You know, it might not be your thing, but uh, we learn a huge amount from movies and TV programs, and a lot of them are are, are moralistic, you know, good versus bad, and the ridiculous and the silly and the, the heroic and how problems get solved. And it's all of the situations of uh, of, of kids' lives and, and, and middle schoolers' lives and teenage years and, and so on. It's all there. Mm -hmm. So sit with your kids. And you know, laugh at the funny parts and cry at the at the sad parts. But kids are going to have a hundred questions through all right. of these shows, and you're the parent. You talk about that stuff, and that's right. just a couple of informal things. And, but those are great ideas because, as you were speaking, I was thinking of my own life, and I grew up with a father who was a litigator. But oh my. <laughs> okay, so you're sitting at the dinner table, and you're a teenager, and you make some statement about something in the world, and where did you get that information? Why do you think that? Exactly. Well, in comparison to what, you know, and all these kinds of things that how and do you that's know? A beautiful, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it, really, it really, it really is. Yeah. yeah, it it really is because I certainly wasn't getting that much in school. So I think that's where I got about 90% of it. And I would recommend that to anyone watching. It does work. I mean, you, you probably don't want to do it every single day because the no. kid eventually rolls their eyes and says, no. oh, I'm not talking anymore. No, yeah, no, let it flow. And, and yeah. again, this is a developmental issue when things get a little heated. 
yeah, that's where you cut it off and you divert the attention to, uh, so what do we have for d- dessert or whatever? Right. I was cut off. I used to watch Nightline and I was told I was not permitted anymore <laughs> because <laughs> it was too much, too fast. I had just too many opinions, but uh, I, right. I cannot thank you enough for sharing your thoughts with us today and spending this time. I'm so appreciative. I think it was a real pleasure for me too. Thanks. You, you've given us some fantastic ideas as well as some insight into what's going on and actually a very optimistic message. I feel a lot better after this conversation than I did before the conversation. So great, that's great. that's always good because it's been it's been yeah. tough lately. So well, thank reality you. is on our side. Reasoning and the evidence is on our side. You know, we, we can win this debate. All right. Well, on that note, I will thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us and have a great afternoon. Okay. Thanks. Bye.